So for number five, we're using the Taylor formula. So remember that the Taylor formula says that some function is equal to the sum of the following. You have the nth derivative of f at a, you have x minus a to the n, and you have n factorial. So we know that we're centering it at 5, so our a is 5. And we're told that the nth derivative of 5 has its own formula here, negative 1 to the n, n factorial over 4 to the n, n plus 1. So this whole term is going to be substituted in for this one, but we still need to write out the rest here. So what this becomes then is negative 1 to the n, n factorial. We still have this on top, and we know that's now x minus 5 to the n. These two terms would then go to the bottom here. So we have n factorial that was there to start with. We have 4 to the n, and we have n plus 1. So you can see there that we have an n factorial that cancels out on both. So we have negative 1 to the n, x minus 5 to the n, all over 4 to the n, n plus 1. So that's what our Taylor series has boiled down to. <clears throat> so we need to find what is its radius of convergence. Well, its radius of convergence is going to be whatever uh, gets us to our endpoints, you know, essentially here. So you can think of this either by doing the ratio test, um, which would be effective here, but probably a little unnecessary. I mean, keep in mind that whenever you've done these types of problems, when you have a constant to an n and then you have some x minus or x plus something to the n, your radius of convergence, if there's no other factors that are going to affect the rate of the convergence, which in this case there's not really because we, all we have is alternating n plus 1. We don't have anything that's bigger than an exponential, like a factorial or something. So these two might affect the convergence or divergence at the endpoints, but they're certainly not going to affect anything within the radius. And it didn't ask you what to figure out the exact interval, just the radius. So in that case, it's always going to be what you're, this constant that you're comparing it to. In this case, it's going to be 4. So you can think of it like this. If we had x equals 9, this would be exactly 4 to the n. These would cancel out, and we'd get some uh, series that we'd need to figure out whether it converges. If it was negative 4 to the n, again, these would cancel out, we'd get another alternating, something else would happen. But anything in between those, this is going to turn into a geometric and it's going to converge, no doubt. Because if the top exponential is smaller than the bottom, you always have a geometric series that converges. So we know that our radius is going to have to be 4. So let me show you how you would get that using the ratio test. <clears throat> So we take the n plus 1th term, and we, use, we don't use the alternating part. Remember, the ratio test uses absolute value. So we take the n, my, n plus 1th term, uh, and this would be n plus 2 on the bottom, times the reciprocal of the nth term, so for the n, n plus 1. And remember, we're doing the limit as n goes to infinity of this. But what cancels out? Well, this cancels out and just leaves us with x minus 5. This cancels out and just leaves us with 4. So we have n plus 1 over n plus 2 times x minus 5 over 4. And for the, if we want this to converge, we want this to be greater than 1. So as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 over n plus 2 uh, is just 1, because those are the same degree uh, rational function there. So we get 1 times x minus 5 over 4, which is just that. And you can see here that if you multiply this, remember this is absolute value, sorry. So if you multiply that across, we get absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than 4, which means x can go anywhere from 
1 to 5 again, or sorry, 1 to 9, so therefore we have a radius of 4. So that's how you figure out our radius of convergence there.